In the lecture that uh, we are going to give today is about the law of entropy and uh, the law of sacrifice, how they are related in the psychological work or in the path of self-realization. We have to know that every cosmic unit in the universe is always utilizing a certain amount of energy in order to manifest itself in any dimension. Remember that the meaning of energy is in work, in action. There is a power, a, a source of force that we call energy. That is always within the matter. So energy and matter are related. We can say that energy is one pole and matter is the other pole. So matter and energy coexist. That's why Einstein says that matter is transformed into energy, energy transforms into matter. So in order for any living thing to exist in its energy in order for this type of matter to transform that energy into light that that we call the universe As you observe the solar system, each planet has a different type of energy or amount of force. That's why in astrology we point each planet saying that is related with this or that type of activity which is, of course, related with its own particular force. And every planet lives from the other. Uh, the sun, for instance, sustains every planet in order for them to rotate or to translate around it. But each one of them also emits a certain type of energy in order to stay at the distance that is, of course, having from the sun to its place and from the other planet as well. We have to understand that that type of energy is always emitted, transmitted, and take it. Or, as we say, we have a transmitter and uh, a receptor. There is always receptor and transmitter or transmitter of that force in different uh, ways. And uh, one energy, when that energy is acting in one plane and is passing into the other plane, we can say that that type of energy is sacrificing itself in order to appear in other plane. That type of sacrifice 
is a transformation from one energy into other type of energy in different type of dimensions. As you see, for instance, the energy that is coming from the absolute descends in, in its pure state, but when we is descending in the different dimensions, is transforming itself until it's appearing in the third dimension. But when it's passing from one dimension to the other dimension, is sacrificing itself in order to appear. When I said to sacrifice means to transform, to lose one state in order to appear into other state. That is happening in order for the energy uh, not to return to its own source. Because if that energy is not transformed into another type of energy, whether it is free or related to any type of matter, that energy returns to its own source. And that is what we call entropy. Entropy is coming from the words N, which is energy, and trope or tropos, which means to return or the way in which the energy returns to its own source. That return could happen or can happen from one source to the other source or even returning directly into the main source which is the absolute. What, that is what is happening in those terms that we call Maha Mambantara and Maha Pralaya. In the Maha Mambantara, the energy which is the light is coming from the absolute and is in activity. I repeat, that's why it's called energy, which comes from the word in work, in activity. And then it's passing from one level to the other level to the other level and always in movement, originating different elements, different type of matters and the energy is always suffering a transformation in order to originate another. And the same happened in the different kingdoms of nature. But when the Maha Pralaya comes, which is the great cosmic night, when all the universe is in repose, and then the energy returns to its own source. And when that energy returns, that matter that was containing that energy is of course disintegrating and because it is disintegrating is because the source of life that was sustaining that matter is no longer there that is what you see for instance in the moon the moon is in entropy which means all the energy that was in the moon is no longer there. But that energy that was giving life to the moon in the past cosmic day returned into its own source in the Mahapralaya, the great cosmic night. But in the cosmic day, the same energy started to, to originate another type of matter. And that type of matter is this planet Earth. In other words, this planet Earth is the daughter of the Moon. The Moon is of course rotating around the Earth because the Earth is sucking all of the energy of the Moon. There is this a theory that says that the Moon is daughter of the Earth, but it is backwards. The earth 
is sucking or vampirizing all of the energy of the moon. And that's why in the future the moon will turn into dust, cosmic dust, will disintegrate forever. This is what we call entropy. But we hold here that 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 we call the Theo Mertma Logos, the creator, which is the intelligence, is doing the sacrifice, the transformation, which is the life of the earth, in order for that uh, energy to not uh, be wasted. When the, the energy is not used but wasted, and then what happens is that the intelligence is losing. When the intelligence loses, then there is not any positive result. The entropy, when it is not being sacrificed, gives as a result failures and that is what happens with the monad when the monad cannot do the sacrifice and then the law of entropy takes over and the result is failing in the universe you find many ways in which the intelligence when I said intelligence I am talking about God which is in Kabbalah Bina, the Holy Spirit Christ, the intelligence that intelligence is always acting through the monad so the monad has to put in activity that energy which is Christ in order to make the sacrifice in order to have positive results and not to lose uh, the opportunity or the time of the cycle but in this way of sacrifice one needs to do super efforts if we do not make any effort or super effort and then we are involved in the law of entropy which means the energy is returning to its own source and the matter is disintegrated and is not sacrificed then there is not positive results that is what is happening in this very moment in our planet earth the planet Earth in this very moment is under the law of entropy which means all of the atomic or the cosmic units which are related with all of the kingdoms are being disintegrated but there is not any positive result because there is not sacrifice every organism let us put an example for instance the plants a tree takes certain type of energy that is coming from other planets from the stars and that energy is transformed into its own body and the energy after being transformed in the body of the tree is descending through its roots into the inner layers of the planet and this is how the planet is feeding itself any type of tree or plant takes a different type of energy and there are different complicated organisms that takes different type of energies at the same time the most 
complex organism is a human organism. It is compounded by many micro laboratories. These micro laboratories are called glands, the endocrinal glands. Each endocrinal gland and each organ within our physical body takes different type of energy related with the planets, related with the stars, related with the cosmos. And that energy is transformed within the physical body and then sent into the interior layers of the earth. As well, we take the energy from the earth and we transform that energy into our micro laboratories uh, called glands and then we transmit it into the space. What is happening in our single organism, physical body, is also happening in the animal, in the plant, and in the mineral. As you know, the physical plane is called Malkut, the kingdom. And I told you that is because it has mineral, plant, animal, and human kingdom. In the mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, in animal kingdom, there is no problem because there is always a positive transformation. The problem exists when the soul enters into the human body because then, due to the creation of the ego, because of the ignorance, the energy that is entering, as, as you know, in the physical body, due to the ignorance of the consciousness, is being transformed in the wrong way and is creating that that we call ego. So the ego is a wrong creation that transforms the energy and destroys the matter. In the ancient times, in the time of Lemuria, People used to live approximately 2,000 years. That was the average, 2,000 years. At that time, the human organism was without ego. Only the consciousness was there. And of course, all the energies that were coming from above and from below were acting without any interference in a hundred percent. The result was, of course, a perfect organism that was living 15 centuries. But since the creation of the ego, the amount of years were diminished from one root race to the other root race in the time of Egypt, in this root race, people were living commonly 150 years. From, from Egypt to this time, the average of uh, the age that anyone can have at this time is about 50 years. That is the average. But some people can live uh, 80 and very rare reach the 100 years. Why? Because the glands, the brain, are degenerated. Meaning that the ego itself is feeding from the energy that is coming into our body and that's why we become sick and we die pretty early, pretty young. For instance, if you observe people in this very moment when you are walking with the knowledge of Gnosticism, and even when you have years of working 
in the regeneration of your physical body, you notice that people are very dumb because they do not save energy or they do not transform the law of entropy. They just let themselves to follow the current of degeneration. And then some things that are very easy to understand or to see, they do not understand. They are, they have uh, a lot of, uh, uh, how you call, they fight a lot in order to comprehend things which are very easy to understand. For those that are having the brain in their own uh, level, or regular level, because we use the brain of about uh, 3%. This very moment that I'm seeing this, I remember uh, a, a movie uh, related with, with all the light that people from other planets were calling people from the Earth small brains. This is how we call you, small brains, because you use only 3% of your brain, and we use approximately 50, 60, or 70 was saying. In reality, that is a fact. Here in our planet Earth, we use only 3% of our brain capacities. And it is due not only for the degeneration of the brain, but also of the glands. Because the brain, as you know, is connected with all of the glands, plexus, and forces that we have in the whole organism. And the energy that's supposed to enter into the brain and put an activity, the 100% of the brain, is not going there. It's going directly into the ego. So the ego itself is a fifth that steals the energy. So we are in a frank uh, way of entropy which means degenerating ourselves little by little until we are going to be equalized with death. Problem with this is that people do not realize the law of entropy. Everybody thinks that we are evolving. Evolution means progress, going up, but if you see, for instance, uh, let's put an example of the classical music. That type of music vibrates in a higher octave. People do not like that type of music. Of course, when I am saying this, I am not generalizing, because I know that there are some people that like the classical music still. But the common and current 97% of people of the earth hate the classical music. They do not like it because they do not understand it. Because that type of vibration is related with the type of energy that is related with some cells of the brain which are no longer in activity in the majority of the people of the planet earth. So they don't like it because that energy does not vibrate or they are not correlated to their brain. And they, of course, attract the type of vibrations related to their brain which are lower vibrations, which are, of course, destroying more the physical body. So in the path that we are going, you see that we are, instead of having more type of uh, senses or higher senses, we are devolving. We are degenerating our senses. We are losing even the physical senses. So that is not, of course, evolution, but devolution. Return, involution, enter into the lower level. In the ancient times, the great initiates were knowledgeable, or they knew 
about this type of knowledge that I am teaching them to you. They knew that the main organ of the planet Earth, or the main organ of nature, was humanity, the human organism that attracts the most powerful energies from the cosmos. And uh, they knew that the state of the glands of the human organism is indispensable to be 100% of activity in order for nature to be stable. But when people fornicate and increases the ego and then the energy is returning to its own source is not, it's not entering into the planet, into the inner layers or is going in the wrong direction which is the ego when that happens and then nature is not taking the energy that needs in order to survive. Efforts in the earth when humanity were in degeneration, abusing of sex because the food that the planet takes in order to survive is called in occultism as cocking. The as cocking is A S K O K I N. Is that type of energy that is the main food for the earth? The as cocking is contained in the ensemines, the entity of semen. And it is also contained in the blood. And not only in the human organism, but only in the animals. As well, I mean, in the animals. The blood of the animals contain, contains a certain type of ascocking and the semen as well. In the plant, the ascocking is in the green substance, in the pollen, in the mineral kingdom, you find that as cocking in the magnetism and the electricity, the forces of the metals. That is what we call as cocking. In the ancient times, when the main organism called human being, the physical body, was degenerated in its own glands, because when you waste the, the sexual energy by fornicating, that energy is wasted in the atmosphere. It, do, it is having no results for nature. Epochs of degeneration in which the human organism was degenerated by alcohol in many other ways, as you know, in different times of history. And then nature was taking <coughs> the ascocking through the sacrifices. The priests of many religions, they knew the relationship of that substance with the blood. And that way, so that's why they were sacrificing animals. It's what we call holocaust. The sacrifice of animals in the altar of many religions in order to liberate their skaking in relation with the forces of nature by the way of mantras powerful forces in order to control the forces of nature that according to the vision of the priests or prophets of that epoch were seen that were coming in order to destroy by earthquakes 
tornadoes or any way, any ways in which nature is moving in order to uh, attract the blood into into its own, and liberate the energy in order to feed itself. So that's why you find that these holocausts or sacrifices of animals were very popular in very ancient religions, which is a barbarian, of course, uh, tradition or practice. Because in order to apply or to, I mean, to control the forces of nature in order to the people not to be destroyed by the, the, the same forces. You know, it, it, what happened is, is the equilibrium of the forces. When the sacrifices of animals stop by the activity of many initiates that were uh, saying that it was a barbarian uh, activity or tradition. And then the sacrifices of animals stop in many places. And because the people were uh, behaving the same way of degeneration, nature was always lacking of that type of energy. And the result was, of course, the wars in many places. In order to obtain that to the sacrifice of many human beings in the battlefield. The first world, uh, world and the second world war is a result, of course, of the mechanism of nature moving different machines, human machines, in order to obtain the great sacrifice to sustain the planet. And this is something that happens. Nature always asks this type of energy through earthquakes, tornadoes, and many uh, ways in which nature takes that force if we do not know how to behave. It's what happens in a single organism. If we are, of course, acting in the wrong way, what happens is a pain, a sickness in the organism, which tends to liberate the energy. Because when we die, or when we enter into the health, elderly age, the energy is liberated. The energy that is entering commonly in the young people is energy which is in the atmosphere, is in the cosmos, is in nature. And the people which are young are taking that and transforming that because their glands are in good state. Because when somebody abuses of his physical body, the glands become to degenerate, and the result is that the energy is returning. Entropy means to return to its own source. The result is death. And then the energy is no longer in activity in that body. But of course, the blood is the only uh, element that contains that type of energy that in a moment of death nature takes in order to, to feed itself. That's why when you bury the death corp, nature is taking that, or when you burn the body also nature takes that from the blood. In these times, the problem of entropy is more dangerous because we the human beings not only are destroying uh, we are not only destroying our own physical body but even we are destroying the physical body of animals plants and minerals Due to our ignorance, now the whole planet in the four kingdoms are now in entropy. You see, for instance, the oceans, 
the great masses of water are a special element in order to transform a certain type of energy in favor of the planet. But now the waters are contaminated. A few years ago, when we were uh, given and saying this type of uh, knowledge in many lectures, people were learning about that we should start taking care of the waters. But now it's worse. The oil of many accidents in the sea, as you know, is destroying the main element of the earth which is the water to transform a lot of quantity of energy so the water itself is now in entropy meaning is not accomplishing its own uh, duty many lands on the earth are not accomplishing that duty So the earth, the soil, is an entropy, the water is an entropy, the atmosphere, the oxygen is full of smog, and as you know, the ozone layer is being destroyed because of the activity of the human being of the planet Earth. So also, the atmosphere is an entropy. So when a planet enters in entropy in all of the four kingdoms, the final uh, goal of that law is a moon. Because the moon started like that in the past cosmic day. Each element was degenerating, or each kingdom, mineral, plant, animal, and human, and the result is now a dead planet. What happened is that we are entering into entropy before time because we are in the fifth root race and the planet earth has to give birth the sixth root race and the seventh root race but before time the planet is in entropy behold there the mineral uh, the plant kingdom You know that the plant, as you know, I told you, each tree transforms the energy that is related to it. And different trees, different plants are taking different type of energy. But when a scientist or any man, due to ambition or greed, is crossing one plant with other is adulterating the molecule, the cells of that cosmic entity which is the tree. The result is that the energy that was entering normally in that tree which was not adulterated is returning into its own source. And then the plant starts to not give its own uh, duty and the result is that the earth does not, does not take that energy. So how many plants are adulterated at this moment? Many. Plus that, the cat of many forests, because the ambition of many factories and the greed of man, because when a tree is not there, it's also not taking the energy. Every animal as well is a different antenna for a different type of energy. But if we kill certain species of animals, the earth is lacking of that type of energy. So that's why it's not a surprise for us to see the earthquakes, tornadoes, and many calamities that are happening on the planet Earth due to the fact that the energy is no longer in the earth in the amount that we need to have it.
So there is a plan, of course, of the way cosmic law, because we know that the solar system is rotating around Alcyon, the star of the Pleiades. We told you in other lecture that Alcyon is the center of this constellation called the Pleiades, and our sun is the seventh star that rotates around Alcyon. The sun takes 26,000 years in order to give a complete round around Alcyon. When that happens, it passing all of the 12 zodiacal signs. But there is another solar system <coughs> which is close to our solar system, which is called the solar system of Baleo, uh, uh, Tilar. Because there are many solar systems close to this one. Baleoto is another solar system. Tilar is another solar system close to our solar system. When I said Baleoto or Tilar, I'm talking about the name of the sun. Because the sun is always the center of any solar system. Our sun, for instance, is Ors. O R S, Ors. And is the center of this solar system. That's why we call this solar system Ors. So the solar system of Ors rotates around Alcyon, a huge star of the Pleiades. And this uh, Sun Tilar is rotating around other stars. But they coincide in the rotation in order to encounter themselves at the end of each rotation of each circle. Because one solar system is rotating in this direction and the other in this direction. But they encounter when they are finishing the voyage of the rotation around their particular suns. When that happens, there is an encounter of planets of each solar system. But what we want to know is this. The solar system Tilar has many planets, as this solar system has as well. But there is a particular planet, which is the sixth planet that rotates around Tilar, or Tilo which is called Hercolubus by the initiates of the planet Earth, Hercolubus, which means brute force or strong force. This planet Hercolubus is six times bigger than Jupiter. And this is the planet that is always entering into the orbit of the planet Earth. Because I repeat, around the Sun Pilar, there are many planets that rotate. But this Hercolobus, which is the sixth one, is the one that enters into the same orbit of the planet Earth when the two solar systems are encounter in the space. When that happens, there is a crash of magnetic forces. And uh, uh, in the past, the planet Hercolobus encountered the Earth four times. And in each time, because it's a planet many times bigger than the Earth, is always causing the Earth to change the axis and to change the face or the surface of the continents. Because the continents, as you know, are like a yoke 
floating in the white matter of the egg. In this very moment, the law of sacrifice has to sacrifice this humanity in order to stop the law of entropy and to put in activity the fire. In the epoch of Atlantis, the only way to stop the law of entropy, because the Atlanteans, they also were destroying nature in many other ways, the only way was for the activity of the waters. So that humanity was sacrificed by the waters, or for the waters. And the planet was saved. But in this very moment, because the degeneration of the Aryan race is stronger than the Atlantean race, this root race need to be sacrificed <coughs> by the fire in order for the planet not to die. And that is why the only hope that we have is the fire. Because if you see, for instance, the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and even the human kingdom, is little by little more degenerated. And the planet Earth is in agony. And that's why you find that there are many sacrifices that are being done. And that's why this knowledge is given to us in order for us to make that sacrifice individually. Because the only way to overpass the entropy is by sacrifice. There is no other way. If we do not sacrifice ourselves, we are not going to overcome the entropy. Because the, el the, en the entropy, when it's in activity, is equalizing everything with death. So little by little, through sicknesses, through wars, everything is being destroyed. And all the energy is returning to its own source without any result and only failure. If you go outside into this society, you will find that the law of entropy is, of course, pulling people in many ways. And uh, the brain is more degenerated. People cannot see the good things, and they even worship evil things. When somebody is having a heart of rock is even admired. And if you have a tender heart in trying to help others, you are being with a type of type of person that is not strong. When you see for instance the diesel which you put in your car or the gasoline that you put in your car is a type of element that you sacrifice within your car in order to obtain the energy in order to move your car. So that diesel or that gasoline is disappearing, is dying in order for other activity or another, another level of the same energy giving life, in this case, to your automobile. In the same way, if we want to liberate ourselves of entropy, we have to sacrifice the elements that are destroying the energy and to utilize that energy within those elements 
in order to originate a higher type of force which will create a higher type of being in order to be out of the law of entropy. Like for instance, if we sacrifice our sexual pleasure, our lust, and then the sperm and the ovum will disintegrate And the type of energy that we liberate, that will be liberated, we put in activity, will regenerate the different glands and parts of our brain which are regenerated. So the only way to regenerate our physical body, our psyche, and all that which is ourselves is by putting in activity the energy that we are not putting in activity. The energy that the law of entropy is taking from us due to our ignorance. So the law of entropy is taking the energy from us through that that we already create, which is the ego. So we had to sacrifice that. But in this way of sacrifice, we need to do super efforts. Because the law of entropy is only sacrificed by super efforts. Because any type of effort can be performed by any type of people in order to obtain anything. But in this type of work that we are talking about, we have to use the super efforts in order not to be uh, victims of the law of entropy. When you go, for instance, to climb a mountain and then you descend from that mountain to the valley after hours going up and down, and suddenly someone comes and tells unto you, you have to return to the summit of that mountain. Because if you remember, you forgot this there. And this is very important for you. So you have to return and to climb that mountain again in this very moment. And to return again to the valley. And you are already dead. You are already exhausted. That is a super effort. That is the example that we have to perform. To sacrifice that that we already have in order to obtain something better. The ego is always attached to many things to nature, to family, is coming into my mind in this very moment, a person that came into Jesus in the Gospels, and he said to Jesus, Master, please, wait for me, I will follow you, I just want to go back and to bury my parents. And then Jesus says, let the dead bury their dead. You follow me. So if we are thinking before entering into this path, or we are going to work, but before I have to do this, we are not doing super effort, because we are thinking in our beloved ego first in our commodity. We are going to work in the annihilation of the ego or self-realization of the being, but before I have to have this, before I have to accomplish this, 
and then I'm going to work. To renounce a fact that we have in the very moment when we need it the most is a most painful thing because it is related to the forces of nature. But of course in the beginning we have to sacrifice those things that are harm to us. That are very easy to know. But after that we have to sacrifice those things that are very good for us. This is how we sacrifice an inferior law because of a superior law. This is how we are controlled by superior laws when we overcome the inferior laws. We want to be controlled by superior laws. Because we know that the laws that are controlling us in this very moment are mechanical laws that are causing us different types of sicknesses, painful, or pain, I mean. And uh, the only way to overcome and to overpass is by sacrificing, sacrificing the inferior law. But we do that with super efforts. And that's why in this path we have the four ordeals related with nature. Ordeal of earth, water, air and fire. Which are related with our own psychology. Each time when we reach, uh, when we reach uh, a different level in that level, we have certain things that we have to sacrifice in order to pass to other levels. That we have to do consciously. Because if we do not do that, then we are going to follow the current of life, which in this very moment is entropy. Everything is being degenerated and is going to be equalized because the law of entropy equalizes everything with death. When the energy is returning to its own source, whether the body of this man is a rich man and the body of this man is a poor man, but at the end, the law of entropy will equalize the body with death will be even and no energy at all. In this moment, for instance, if you see people, little by little, everybody will be equalized, even being physically alive. They will be dead to the spirit, to the higher forces forever. This planet will be inhabited by monsters and they are already monsters in this very moment taking over the planet. When I said monsters, I'm talking that from the psychological point of view. And they only want blood. They only want to kill people in order to obtain power. And the propaganda that you see in the movies is just that, death, killing, degeneration, because everybody is being equalized. And to go out of that equalization is very difficult, because my friend, my family, my father, my mother, my relatives, all of them are being equalized. And to be out of that equalization is to be a rebel. A rebel 
but with a good cause following the right direction which is to be self-realized and to sacrifice that which is degenerated in order to originate something good. But I repeat, if the great cosmic law permits this humanity to go in the way that is going, the result will be that this humanity will convert this planet in a new moon before time. So that is not possible because we need a six root race and a seven root race. That's why this humanity will be sacrificed. And the one that is going to make this big sacrifice is the fire. You see that the inner layers of the earth are weak. And we see great faults in the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean of the planet Earth. These great faults are putting in contact the water with the liquid fire magma of volcanoes, which are originating steam. That steam is shaking the inner layers of the continents. And that's why there are many earthquakes in different uh, parts of the earth in this very moment. And of course, the earthquakes are the result of the steam, of the union of the water and the fire in the center of the earth. But also because the magnetism of her colubus that is already coming into our direction. This planet in her colubus, according to Nostradamus, he says that in 1999 will appear in the sky and every human eye will see it. So six times bigger than Jupiter is of course pulling the fire, is helping the earthquakes that are happening around the Earth. And is of course changing the axis little, little by little. When that mass will approach the orbit of the Earth, and then the magnetism will change the axis and the poles will be equator and the equator will be pole and then the continents will submerge into the waters and will appear other lands and this is how the cosmic law is going to help the planet in order to originate a new mineral kingdom a new plant kingdom, animal kingdom, and human kingdom. Because the four kingdoms are already regenerated, polluted, rotten. There is no way to help, but only by the fire. As you see, when you are going to plant in the field, you burn the plants, and then you plant. But of course, the great... Uh, White Lodge is always compassion and uh, is given unto us the knowledge in order for us to be out of the great cataclysm that is coming in different steps. Even when we are in the higher works that we perform in Gnosticism, we perform always the great sacrifice. The Christ, the light, is sacrificing itself for us in this very moment. Be but we have to cooperate with that light if we want to be helped, if we want to be saved. And remember, Salvation, that we are talking here, 
We are not talking about salvation of the physical body. We are talking about salvation of our soul, which is a work of sacrifice. We have to annihilate something inside in order to give birth something superior. We have to sacrifice anger in order to create love. We have to sacrifice lust in order to create chastity. We have to sacrifice greed in order to create altruism. We have to sacrifice envy in order to get philanthropy. We have to sacrifice pride in order to get humbleness. We need to sacrifice gluttony in order to obtain temperance. We need to sacrifice laziness in order to obtain diligence. This is how we sacrifice the seven deadly sins or capital sins into the seven higher virtues related with the higher forces and energies that have to enter into our physical body, into our minds, into our psyche, into our soul, in order to give us that uh, we want, related with each one of the planets, the seven chakras, seven virtues, seven powers, etc. If we do not sacrifice the ego, how we are going to obtain those energies? Because the contrary of those energies are the ego that is destroying our physical body, our soul, our spirit, and even the planet. Remember, if there is not sacrifice, the law of entropy is not overcome. If we do not overcome the law of entropy, the law of entropy will destroy us physically and psychologically is already destroying us physically because the brain is no longer active in a hundred percent and we are very very dumb physically speaking psychologically speaking after the physical death if we do not destroy the ego here and now we are going to be equalized in the world of Ilipath, Abyss, Inferno, Hell, or wherever. This is how we descend into the Abyss in order to be equalized and to liberate the energy in order to return it into its own source. Question. Yeah, it's obvious that the Aztecs, Mayans, and other priests, not only of the uh, religions of America, but even in the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church also were doing human sacrifices, burning people in the fire is a human sacrifice. And then when religion degenerates, they start performing sacrifices. Because instead of teaching the truth, the doctrine, to change the people, humanity, for good, they are starting performing the sacrifices in order to stop the forces of nature. Without changing humanity or helping humanity to change. So of course, when every religion starts performing sacrifices, 
is because it's degenerating. In the beginning, the Aztec religion and the Mayan religion were not doing those sacrifices. They were performing the great work. At the beginning of Christianity, they were also performing the great work. But in the Middle Ages, the Holy Inquisition, that has nothing of holy, were burning people in the name of God was a type of sacrifice because Holocaust, Holocaust. If the moon little by little will be far out of the uh, uh, orbit of the earth and will be disintegrated. The time will be dust. No. We are, well, right now, really the moon has now more energy to give us. The whole force is already in the earth because the moon is already dead. Something to do with this Yeah. You mean that the Theo Merma Logos. Theo Merma Logos. Merit my logos. The creator, the creation, yeah. They don't do Yeah. They don't merit my logos. How about uh, stuff like Armenian uh, or Armenian that is a natural phenomena which is happening in the Isotopes, yeah, of uranium or plutonium, right? Yeah, yeah. But because part of the Earth, there are certain theories that say because part of the Earth is already entered into other dimension, which means that those elements are entering into another level by liberating the energy. Eventually, that energy will enter in activity into the fourth dimension. But of course, that will happen after the seven root rays, when the whole planet will enter into the fourth dimension. Some elements, like plutonium, uranium, are liberating the energy right now. In order for that energy to, put it, to be in activity in the fourth dimension, Yeah, the atomic bomb and the hydrogen bomb and any type of nuclear uh, explosion helps, of course, the law of entropy. There is always uh, involuted and evolving elements in, in the same element. You can see, for instance, in the copper, certain type of copper that are evolving and the devolution in certain type of copper as well. It depends on the activity of the metal. Death? Yeah. Death is the only liberated, but when we reach death, mechanically we are not obtaining uh, positive results because that is just for the mechanism of nature yeah. if we perform death consciously which means by transforming one element into the other because death is nothing but the activity of the energy passing into another level. That is death. The entropy, of course, equalizes everything with death. But that energy is not being used for any purpose. 
But when you sacrifice something, then you are obtaining that energy for another purpose. Because you are transforming the element into another type of element. As for instance, when the ego enters into the abyss, is being sacrificed, annihilated. So the energy which is within the ego is without any purpose for the monad. Because it is a mechanism of nature liberating the energy in order to stabilize the forces. While if we liberate that energy with our willpower, the result will be, of course, the creation of the internal bodies, the developing a certain type of knowledge, and then we are overcoming the law of entropy because we are not following death in the mechanical way, but in the esoteric path, in the civilization. Sacrifice is sacrificing the entropy. Means we are sacrificing the entropy. The energy that was acting in the moon returned into the absolute, into the chaos, and was in repose for many eternities. And when the cosmic day started, that energy started to originate a new seed. That seed starts to grow in the higher dimensions, originating the planet and descending from the higher dimensions into the third dimension. Of course, in different times, dimensions is not happening of course in one day or in one moment like when you see a plant when you plant a seed of a plant you see that eventually it will be a tree it will take sometimes years in order to be a tree so for a planet to be a planet takes of course millions of years in order to descend from one dimension to other dimension to other dimension in order to appear into the third dimension with life. But that is the energy which is descended. Her colorful yeah, it happened because uh, the the Earth change has been changing for four times, so strong changes because the planet. Yeah, it, uh, it changed the face of the Earth in the time of Lemuria as well. And Australia was part of Lemuria. The Aborigines from Australia are uh, part uh, of descendants from degenerated Lemurians. As you remember, I told you that some men of Lemuria were having, uh, they were crossing themselves with beasts. The result was many types of species, of animals, and as well the Australoids. They were directly descended from Lemurians and beasts. So it wasn't just that they came to No. Mm. In this very moment, for instance, let's put an example. North Pole and South Pole. North Pole and South Pole will become equator. And the equator will become south and north. Because there are many things that we judge are good. And we do not know that they are negative. Right now, we are seeing things that are negative for us. And then we say that we have to sacrifice them. 
but good things that apparently we think are good are not good but in this very moment are good for us but when we enter in other level those good things that were good for us are no longer good they are negative evil for us for instance right now you are entering and starting the work many things for you are good and uh, I always advise you and tell you do this do that because it's good for you but both things for me are not good because I am in another level so when you enter another level those things that were good are no longer good you have to sacrifice those things if you want to enter another level in the beginning for instance you start practicing you need to control your food in order to avoid fornication because your body is already teached to fornicate so you have to control your food it's like for instance when you want to ride a, a brute horse Brute. wild horse a wild horse. Some uh, horsemen, they they feed the horse with some type of uh, grass that will give the, uh, a diarrhea to the horse for one night. So the horse will be with diarrhea for one night. Next day, the horse is completely weak, you know, because diarrhea. And then, the horseman is controlling because the horse is weak. The same way we have to understand our physical body is the horse. We have to give in the beginning when we are starting practicing sex magic. I'm talking about sex magic. It's a time type of food that will not give a lot of fire. <laughs> and then you will start controlling it. After when you tame the horse did it very well because you know how to. In my case, for instance, I take a lot of things for my body that will give me a lot of energy, a lot of strength. But I know how to control it already. I can eat meat, I can eat many, many things, and, and I feed it because I have seven bodies to feed, you know. Because from my from my physical body, I have to feed my astral body, mental body, and all that energy has to be, you know. So I I, I need to be in activity and, and feed my body very well. And sometimes when I don't feed my body very well, there are sometimes pain in some organs due to the fact that the, the whole energy is going up, right? The main meat. No meat. Uh, the the main type of element fire, water, etc. And meat, of course, but sometimes I don't need it. Like the sad time boats. Forces, for instance, that I am uh, capable to do or, or practices that you cannot because you, you don't have the, the elements in order to do it. And uh, a type of also powers that you develop. Mm -hmm. The powers, for instance, for you are good, right? You need to develop powers. But when you reach certain level, if you want to overcome that level, you have to sacrifice that power. Meaning you have to renounce to the power. There are some masters that they are so attached to the powers that they don't renounce, so they are remaining at that level forever. But the, for instance, in order to enter into the absolute, you have to renounce to omnipotence and omnipotence. Omnipotence and omniscience. This is related with gods. There are many gods in the universe that they don't enter the absolute because they do not want to renounce to omnipotent and omniscient. But for us, why are we going to renounce that when we don't have it? Mm -hmm. There is something beyond? Oh, yes. Yeah. 
But for us, for instance, we want to acquire that, right? We want that. So why do we want to sacrifice that when we don't have it? Hmm? For instance, love. Sometimes you have to overcome love. But in order to overcome love, you have to have love. Because the intimate is beyond love. In the, in the kingdom of happiness. When God is showing us his own hell, and then we are seeing how he loves us. So the hell for God is his love for humanity. Mm 